Hey, what's up guys? It's Forrest Death here and uh, Happy New Year. I am recording this on December 31st. I don't know if it's going to be uploaded today, but I'm going to be doing a video about my manga collection and how it's changed. Just give an update basically about my collection since I think the last video I did on it was the 31st of 2020. So we're just going to go through my collection. going to show off how I've got a lot of new stuff. I got rid of some older stuff and yeah, let's get to it. So we got... This Dr. Stone one-shot reboot Yakia or Bakia, I, I, I always butcher his name, but this is Senku's father, and I really like this. I thought it was a really good read. Um, as someone who likes the Dr. Stone anime, but isn't as interested enough to go into the manga because it's still ongoing and it's a lot of volumes, let alone collecting it will be a lot of money. Getting this for uh, like $10 or something it was pretty. It was a pretty nice read. I don't know if it's canon or not, because there's some things that happen in it that I don't think would make sense with the main story, but I thought it was a good read. Next, we got uh, Chainsaw Man. We got volumes 1 through 8, which is what's currently available in the U.S. I read this all digitally, I believe, last January, and I liked it a lot. I thought it was really fun. It reminded me a lot of Gantz, which is probably one of my new favorite manga series. Hated it, but now loved it, and this series had a lot of stuff that was similar to Gantz, in my opinion, Chainsaw Man, so I really like Chainsaw Man. Next up, we have Volumes 1 through 13 of Quintessential Quintuplets, and I believe that Volume 14 is the last one, but I'm not purchasing it because I ordered the box set that contains, I believe, Volumes 1 through 5. I ordered that, I think, in June, and it was supposed to arrive in August, and it keeps getting pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. Now it's coming, like, January 22nd. It's insane how many times it's been pushed back. I don't know if it's ever going to come. People who order that can relate, but this series by itself is one of my favorite uh, romance mangas. The anime got me really hooked into wanting to venture into the manga for this, so this is really good. Really good series. Now I have what I consider my prized possession, my holy grail of my collection. Even though the series itself isn't that amazing, we got volumes 1 through 7 complete of the singles of High School of the Dead. The series is out of print. You cannot get these volumes anymore. You only can get them used. I believe Right Stuff actually had some of 1, 3, and 6, I want to say. Either 6 or 5 on hand to purchase but there were some that just said no longer available so this is basically out of print i believe it took me about three or four months to get them all and now i have them all i have a good time with this series yes it's not the best thing yes there's a lot of fan service in it and as someone who's not even that big in the fan service stuff i just think this is fun i love zombies too and i like the tributes it pays to george romero and stuff and it's just a fun series it's a shame it was never finished because the author died and his brother, who did the art, since they're both brothers, said that the series is not going to continue, that this is all we're going to get for High School of the Dead. So I believe the anime adapted the first four or five volumes, I forget, and then there was a mall arc, which was definitely a homage to Dawn of the Dead, and something shortly after that, and then that's all it is for the content, but really fun series. Definitely not for everyone. If you were to collect these, I honestly would just recommend getting the two omnibuses, and they're also in color too. So I would just recommend getting those if you would want to save money and have them in your collection. Next, I got Higurashi. I got the Abducted by Demons arc and the Cotton Drifting arc, which are my two favorites of the whole series. I honestly prefer the anime more, but the manga's pretty good. Next, we got got my. HP Lovecraft manga, The Hound, and other stories. I know this dude also did At the Mountains of Madness, which is a two-parter, which I really want to get. So, yeah, Lovecraft is great. I actually got a Lovecraft book for Christmas so I can read more of the stories because I've only read, I think, two of them. Well, now three, but I want to get into more of Lovecraft's work, so I might pick up the Mountain of Madness manga, too. Next here, we got this one single volume of another out-of-print series, Gantz, which I would consider probably... Up there with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and Goodnight Pun Pun as like my favorite series. I love it. It's so fun. I hated this series so much when I first read it. I reread it earlier this year and I just had such a fun time. I think Kurono is an excellent protagonist with development. He starts off so unlikable, but throughout the story gets a ton better. I did a whole video about this I'll, that I'll link to if you want to hear my opinions on Gantz, but I just think that this is an excellent series it's so fun yes it's not the best written yes it doesn't have the best of anything really but it's just a very very fun series i have this single volume of gantz here because i have another series by the same author Hiroya oku right behind it giant i have volumes one through five i believe 
we're up to volume six in publishing right now for Western release. A lot of people don't like it. Don't let the mouse scores fool you. If you like Gantz, if you like Inuyashiki, you'll like Gigant. It's fun. Then we got Versailles of the Dead, one through two, and I think a third volume is supposed to be coming out still, hopefully. I want to wait till the third volume comes out because I think I might actually like this from the first few pages that I read of volume one. Next, we're going to go down to my second shelf right here. We kick it off with a heavy hitter right here. Volumes 1 through 7 of Goodnight Pun Pun by Inio Asano. This series means a lot to me. There was a lot of elements in this series that I could really relate to that I haven't seen in any other media. The biggest being how Pun Pun overthinks a lot of stuff. I've seen that concept done, but I haven't seen it as executed as well and as relatable for me personally in this series. This is, I just think it's an excellent series. The last two volumes in particular were just really hard for me to get through. I didn't necessarily cry as much as many people, but it just made me feel like shit near the end. But despite those feelings, this series is phenomenal. And I would recommend if you like darker psychological character study coming of age stories to check it out but it's not for everybody it is a very serious and hard-hitting manga next we have downfall another one of inio asano's works just this single volume though is the entire story and i remember when before i got this a lot of people said they didn't like it so it caught me nervous but i think for his single works this might be my favorite i really like the story in it Right next to it, we have Solonin, which I thought was good. I don't think it's good as most people say, but I had a good time reading it. That's all I have for Inio Asana right now, though I want to collect some of his other works like Girl on the Shore and Nijigahara Holograph to have in my collection. I have the first uh, volume of Monster right here. I really want to get into the series. I'm now debating if I want to watch the anime or just read the manga. My friend recently just finished the anime and said it was fantastic. He said, for me who likes horror and suspense and mystery and stuff, this would be right up my alley. Then we got JoJo's right here. We even have Steel Ball Run Volume 1, Japanese edition right there, which is one of my favorite books that I actually own. Uh, yeah, I own all of Part 1. All of part two I own volumes that have some of my favorite moments from part three and I have the first volume of part four I don't think I'll be collecting any more of the Jojo volumes honestly I mostly just want to have part one and two complete in my collection part three uh, is just a lot of volumes to collect and they're pretty pricey and part four onward there's just so many translation name changes that I'm not gonna really get as into it as I would have liked because with the anime they at least still say it even though that the subtitles are changed I don't really want to read part five and just read it zipper man the entire time coming from Bucciarati so I'm thinking I might actually sell my diamond is unbreakable and possibly my two part three volumes but I'm not sure Jojo, though, is still my one of my favorite series, not just for anime and manga, but in general. Coming down here, we have a series that I will never, ever, ever get rid of in my life. Unless it gets super pricey and I really need the money. But I do not see myself getting rid of this anytime soon is Volumes 1 through 40 of Berserk and the Guidebook right there. Berserk is incredible. Uh, it's, prob it's definitely in my top five favorite series ever. The artwork, the story, guts, even as a character, is just phenomenal. It's a shame what happened to Miura earlier this year. I could not believe it when I heard it. I think volume 41 for singles is going to be the last one released by Dark Horse. And after that, that's all we're going to get from Berserk. They didn't officially cancel it right away. So I feel there's going to be some kind of continuation coming. But I don't know what that necessarily is going to be. I don't know if it's going to be the same series name as Berserk. Or a series with a different name following it. Like Berserk Epilogue or Berserk colon something and it's by his assistance. Only time will tell. I also have Miura's other single manga up here, Giganto Maxia, and it was pretty good. Definitely not in the same quality of Berserk, but you're comparing one volume to all of this of storytelling and world building. But definitely if you're a fan of Berserk, you should check out that. Very good. And coming down to our last shelf right here, we don't have much manga on this shelf, but I'm going to be talking about this shelf in general, talking about my graphic novels that I have as well. So. We have right here, volumes one through five of Blade of the Immortal. I don't know if these are still getting printed. I know the hardcovers are coming out now, but I want to collect them in these omnibus formats because the spines look amazing. I have half of them right now. I just need to get the last five and then I'll be good with the whole set. Then here are my graphic novels. We have Watchmen, Viva Vendetta, The Walking Dead, Invincible, which I got the second one for Christmas, so now I can finally read them all. Let me move this real quick. Got some Deadpool comics. We got The Killing Joke, 
which is my favorite comic book ever saga which i heard was incredible even though it's on hiatus i really want to get into it soon we have the killing joke noir which is just black and white and then we have rohan at the louvre which is just which is just this little manga that araki wrote which is the only manga that's ever in the louvre i think it's really cool the entire thing is in color too it's just a really interesting read and what i pulled off this shelf is another christmas present that i got this year the Complete Tales of H.P. Lovecraft. I've only read the first one so far, which is only seven pages, but I can't wait to get into some of the stories in here. I can read At the Mountains of Madness, I can read The Call of Cthulhu, I can read Reanimator, all the big ones are in here. I just cannot wait. I wanted to get into Lovecraft for a long time, and now I finally can. Coming over to this shelf over here, hey Jason, hey Michael, we have some horror books, and that's why I have these masks here to accommodate the horror theme up here. We have Junji Ito with Shiver, Smash, Fragments of Horror, Gyo, Tomi, and Uzumaki, or Tomie, however you pronounce it. Uzumaki was the first manga I've ever read. I really like Uzumaki. I think it's excellent. A lot of people say it's overrated, but I have a, I had a great time with it, and the manga means a lot to me. I am so excited for the anime adaptation coming out. I'm just thrilled beyond belief. Down here on the next shelf we have Inuyashiki Complete Volumes 1 through 10. Inuyashiki was so fun. I would say honestly, despite Gantz being my favorite out of Oku's Big 3, I would probably recommend Inuyashiki to people who would want to get into his work. Because like me, when I first went into Gantz, I hated it because I thought that how the characters talked and the and the insane amounts of nudity and gratuitous violence really turned me off. I feel like Inuyashiki is a good gateway into his work because it still feels like Hiroya Oku, but also pulls a lot back on a lot of those things that I mentioned. There's barely any nudity in this at all. Next, we have volumes one through five of Grand Blue Dreaming. Uh, I've not even touched this series. I, I honestly got these on a Right Stuff summer sale because a friend said it was an amazing comedy manga and I still gotta check it out. Satoshi Kon's opus I think is fantastic. It's a shame that they died before they could finish the series because the stuff that is in this manga is just really, really cool. It is very, it is very unique. It is very unique and people, for people who know me, Perfect Blue, which he directed, is one of my favorite anime movies ever. It's the first anime-ish thing I've actually ever seen. So Satoshi Kon, I feel like it was just a genius that was lost too soon because the idea is that he had here in this manga are just so mind fuckery and how it ends I, I mean at least he has an ending that he did write that he did draw really rough sketches of that his family gave that his family allowed to be used in this release by dark horse but i just wish that he had more of i wish he had more time i just wish he had more time I just wish he could just still finish this, went back to it, wrote a proper ending if he was still with us. It's such a shame, but by itself, it's a fine read. Next, we have Death Note 1 and 2, the Black Editions. I've only watched the anime, I've only read a little bit of the manga. Uh, Death Note is Death Note. What I did read, though, was Death Note, Another Note, and that was fantastic. It is a prequel to Death Note. Elle mentions it in the anime called The BB Murder Cases, and it's just awesome. Go read it, seriously. Especially if you're a fan. Next, we have Araki's Manga Theory and Practice. I have not touched this yet, but I plan to soon. Now on this shelf, I have a lot of Blu-rays and DVDs covering my books behind, so I'm gonna remove them real quick. But before I do that, I'll just show off. This is my Trigun Maximum Volume right here. The only one I have, I think I'm going to be selling this. And yeah. Okay, so the reason why I have a lot of these mangas back here is because they're either mangas that I just have the first volume of, that I don't know if I'm going to keep collecting. Aside from Fire Punch, I'm definitely going to be getting more of that. The issue is just the volumes are always out of stock when I check. But a lot of these other series like Kaguya-sama and Konosuba and even Vinland Saga, which I heard was great, I might just sell off and get rid of. But yeah, we have the Perfect Blue novels, the first two Toradora light novels, Fire Punch Volume 1, Konosuba Volume 1, The Light Novel, Vinland Saga Volume 1, Kaguya-sama Love is War Volumes 1 through 3, we have the Kizu Monogatari 3 Light Novel, and then we had to have some Stephen King books and Cliff Burton's To Live Is To Die. I will never ever get rid of this book. I love this book. It's phenomenal. And then we have some games. Finally, on our last shelf right here, we only have two series left. We have Vagabond. We have Volumes 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, and 8. Five is always impossible to get. 
I don't know if five is ever even going to come back in stock, but it needs to. I read half of the first Vizbig. The artwork is fantastic. The storytelling seems like superb. And I got to get into this. This is probably going to be the next manga series that I read in my collection. And then right here we have the complete Neon Genesis Evangelion manga series with the five volumes. I know that the ending for this is... I don't, want, I don't know if it's insane compared to the anime's ending, but I just know the ending is very different from the anime's ending. Thanks for watching guys, my manga collection, and I will be doing one of these again in the following year. So, see you guys. Happy New Year.